agriculture is a foundational part of Minnesota's economy, and Minnesota's farmers are adept at persevering through all kinds of challenges. Lately, the difficulties have mounted, stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic and, in some areas of the state, a brutal season of drought. Joining me to talk about the governor's farm relief proposal is the commissioner of the Department of Agriculture, Tom Peterson. Thank you so much for being here. Great to be here. You have traveled around the state and talked with lots of people in the agriculture industry. How has this summer's drought impacted them and what have you been hearing from both farmers and livestock producers? Yeah, you know, it's just been what a crazy summer, you know, as we look at everything. You said it well, as it hasn't been just the drought, it's been, you know, COVID. I think 2019 was the wettest year on record for farmers. 2018, we had a record low income, you know, so it's just been one thing after another. And then we went into 2021 thinking things would be better, and we ended up with this drought. And the drought is not only that we have a lack of water, but the excessive heat that we've had this summer, you know, just burned uh, crops up. And so we really made an effort myself I've traveled to all uh, corners of the state literally I've been uh, on many farms this summer I had the governor out on many farms so we could hear firsthand I also uh, starting three months ago hosted uh, drought stakeholder calls every three months every th every two weeks for the last three months to really hear from our stakeholders and update people what's going on so that we could put this drought package together because you know we um, at one point 80 percent of Minnesota was in a d2 or severe drought and almost 50 percent of Minnesota was in an extreme drought uh, 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 35 percent so a lot are you know of Minnesota and we're still in that in northern Minnesota so it's a really tough position and we're really concerned about losing farms in Minnesota especially cattle farms uh, uh, and our specialty crops. And you you mentioned those two things because Governor Walls has proposed 10 million dollars in aid half of that would be directed to drought relief grants for those two things that you mentioned livestock producers and specialty crop producers why are these groups specifically in need of support? You know, we really focused on looking at the overall system in ag. All farmers could probably use some support, but you know, corn, soybean, wheat farmers, they do have a good safety net in crop insurance. The cattle farmers, especially croppers, while there is some assistance, it is just not uh, to that level. And so we felt like the state has a, a surplus. We have some dollars that we could help support our industry right now. Because by supporting our industry and keeping our farmers, we're actually going to help the state in the long run. And that helps those corn and soybean farmers if they have cattle to sell to. And so this is why we focused on uh, those, uh, you know, our pastures, our hayland dro uh, really dried up this year. In fact, still only 3% of Minnesota's pasture is in excellent condition. We're 60% of our pasture land in Minnesota is in poor, very poor condition. Uh, the other $5 million in the governor's proposal provides funding for the Rural Finance Authority's Disaster Recovery Loan Program, allowing zero interest loans to cover drought-related expenses or losses. Who benefits from these generally, and why is this proposal a mixture of both grants and zero interest loans? Yeah, and we kind of like that approach because the grant kind of helps. It's kind of a, you know, helps a farmer pay a bill or two, which is important. We did this a couple of years ago for dairy farmers. And, you know, I had farmers come up to me in tears thinking, you know, for that help or that check, help pay that bill, help them get over the hump, help them know that the state cared about our industry. So those grants are important that would help things like wells, uh, water, fencing, things that they've had to do this summer. The loan that goes along with that for maybe more money that a farmer needs. We have a zero interest loan. So think of our rural finance authority as like our bank at the department where the legislature has appropriated dollars. And we have a revolving loan account that uh, has does may not have enough money in it to uh, uh, facilitate all the needs. Even just today, I've taken calls uh, from farmers who are looking to use that and it would help us boost that up so we have enough. And that's a zero interest loan with a nice payback time. So it would help those farmers. Uh, a statement from the Senate's Agriculture Chair, Tori Westrom, who will also be a guest on this program, calls for a mixture of grants and property tax rebates. Majority Leader Jeremy Miller expressed support for a bipartisan solution in, in some kind of aid for farmers. So in your view, are property tax rebates another way to help farmers? You know, absolutely. I think that, you know, what we wanted to do by getting this proposal out there is everybody was kind of talking about drought relief, but nobody was putting anything on the table. So we uh, decided, let's put this on the table. It's ready to go, um, but we're totally uh, willing to work with. It needs to be bipartisan. We need a program that things and people are going to use. I've been able to 
talk and meet with Senator Westrom. We've worked on our bills, have always passed with bipartisan support. Uh, I was able to connect with uh, um, uh, uh, Majority Leader uh, Miller this morning, you know, and so I think we'll keep working on hopefully a good package that uh, could involve uh, different items, but this is where we wanted to start. Well, in the greater context is the whole political situation in which we find ourselves because there is this aid package. There is the frontline worker pay, which, you know, we hear that they may be getting close to an agreement. Those are the reasons why Governor Walls would call a special session. But there's also this this uh, looming potential threat of the Senate Republican caucus dismissing Commissioner of Health Jan Malcolm. So how do you feel about the politics that seem to be getting involved in this? Yeah, you know, I represent uh, all of Minnesota, but I really represent our farmers. And the clock's ticking for our farmers. You know, the, the amount of farmers that I talked to, I talked to a group of farmers last night who they need help now, you know. And uh, the federal government has help too, but it, sometimes it takes a while. Like some, in some programs, farmers are getting paid now for a disaster in 2019. That, uh, we're able to step in and work closer if we're able to get something done. And so that's why I pushed the governor, the governor, and we looked at that. To, let's come out with something. Let's let's try to include something in this as we, as we can because the clock's ticking for a lot of farmers. You know, we lost 20 dairy farmers in July in another 20 in August. And that's hard for me when I open that report in the uh, every month to see how many dairy farmers we have. And I know a lot of those are, are caused by the drought, help push them into that. Uh, broadening out our conversation now, um, water is essentially a part of this conversation because we have a lack of it right now. And the Department of Natural Resources is the agency that handles permits for crop irrigation. This was one summer of drought, but climate change experts are pointing to greater volatility. You mentioned 2019 having excessive rain, you know, so, so we have this, you know, ebb and flow and you never know, obviously in farming, you never know. But how should, in this evolving landscape and water usage, should the agriculture industry be thinking about water? You know, I think that uh, I've toured a lot of irrigation farms this summer because that's been a big issue is that uh, is being smarter about uh, all of our water usage. And really, I, I say smarter and thinking about the climate and being prepared for that. And because it's amazing what our irrigators are doing now, you know, they control everything from their phone and they can uh, really uh, do amazing things with the water usage and to um, really control and, and um, minimize, you know, what they need to use and put on. And so uh, I think it's uh, a lot of good things going on with water, but also how do we protect that soil moisture by maybe using cover crops? We have a great program at the Department of Agriculture, our Minnesota Ag Water Quality Certification Program, that uh, the governor has a goal of getting to uh, 2 million acres by 2022. And we're almost to about 800,000 acres enrolled in 1,100 farmers that have changed farming practices for uh, to help with conservation, but a lot of those farmers are seeing benefits in the drought. So I think there's good positive things going on uh, with that. And, and this, the drought and the rains push those conversations. Finally, before we go, uh, the census data has been released and it shows that Minnesota is becoming increasingly diverse. There've been many stories over the past few years about the aging of Minnesota's farmers and I'm wondering if we're turning a corner in the state and what's the situation with both younger farmers and farmers who represent a diverse background? You know, and, and you know, we always think about a lot of people look like me, you know, a 50 year old white male, uh, our average age of a farmer in Minnesota is 58 years old. Uh, we have a lot of family owned farms, but we have a lot of opportunities in Minnesota. So we at the department, we started Emerging Farmers Working Group um, over a year ago. Um, where we brought together, uh, whether it's Somali, Hmong, veterans, all people that want to get into farming and uh, have been advising the department on uh, that program. And we also, the legislature helped us fund an emerging farmer uh, a person to help us at the agency. But we have a great suite of loans, grants, and other things that help our beginning farmers. I'd argue we have the best in the upper Midwest. Uh, so big issue. Commissioner Tom Peterson, it's such a pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.